Today I'm going to give you my top reasons why I don't think you should start a side hustle. Uh, and more importantly, why your side hustle might not ever be your full-time job. I know. I'm being so mean right now. So much hype out there. Look at me in my fancy life on the beach all day and I don't work and I make six figures. There's so much hype out there and a lot of it's crap. I'm just going to be honest with you. Before you quit your job, I really want you to think critically about whether your side hustle is a real deal, okay? So I just want to run through my top reasons why it might not be a good idea for you. Uh, and then you can judge for yourself. You can say, oh, no, she's crazy. And if you think that, that's fine. You can leave me a comment. And I, I love it. I love hearing uh, what people's pushback is because it helps me tailor my content, actually. I can answer those uh, struggles a little better. One reason why your side hustle, like Etsy shop, crafting booth, photography business, whatever it is that you're doing for fun on the side, uh, one of the reasons that you might not actually be successful at it or make any money in the, at the end of the day is if you think sales equals a dirty word. Because guess what? It's not true. Sales can be super fun, super rewarding, not just financially. The way I look at sales is I'm problem solving for my clients. I'm solving problems for them. That's why they came to me. They walked into my house or my studio with their wallet for a reason. My job is to make it super easy for them to spend money with me. <laughs> That's my job. I get out of my own way. I make it really, really easy to provide amazing heirlooms for them. Sales is not a dirty word. There's a reason people are there. Think about it like this. Last time you went into like, let's say Target, right? And you went in there to get like toilet paper, okay? Yeah, did you walk out of there with just toilet paper? Or did you end up spending a hundred bucks on other stuff? Yeah, that's the same thing as someone coming into your house or your studio or wherever, your booth at a trade show. Your job is just to make it super easy like Target does. Target makes it really, really easy for me to throw a bunch of crap in my, in my cart. I usually pick up a hand cart because I don't want to get like too much stuff. But still, I'd never get out of there without spending like a hundred bucks. Target doesn't apologize. Target's not trying to give me free conditioner because that's where I always buy my conditioner. They don't give me any free stuff. So if you think sales is a dirty word and you're always like so thankful for any sale that you just add all this free crap at the end with your client didn't even ask you for, all that stuff that you think they should have that you want to give them, they'll buy. Your job is just to make it really, really easy for them to buy it. It's not your job to decide whether they can afford it or not. That's their job. And honestly, I'd be even bigger devil's advocate and say your job is to find people who can't afford it. <laughs> I'm being really feisty today. I kind of apologize, but not really. Okay, next up. Have you not done your math? If, you're, if you want your side hustle to be a real deal and turn it into a real full-time job, you have to be good at math is your one of your parents an accountant you know is your husband an accountant or your wife you have to be able to run your costs of goods sold and know what what items are more profitable than others some things are super profitable and some things are not some things take too much time for the money that you can charge that's all running a business you have to think critically about your business and it's so easy like I said for people to just give away the farm or their ego is so filled with the fact that someone wants to hire them at all or buy anything at all. But that's not good for your bottom line. It's not good for your retirement. It's not good for paying health insurance. It's not good for saving for your kid's college fund. It's not good for anything. All you're doing is giving them extra money they, they didn't even need. They would have bought all that stuff from you. So running your COGS, cost of goods sold, is huge. That will also help you with your sales. So the way I look at, again, that target analogy, right? If you've ever worked retail or food service, you know that if a customer comes in and they're like, oh, isn't there a coupon? Or isn't this on sale? Or I thought it was on sale like, a, like yesterday, but it was really like three weeks ago. Uh, you know, what's interesting about that is if you actually like lowered the price in the register, you would get fired or written up. So if it's your own business, why would you just lower your price for no reason or just because there was a little pushback by the client? You fire yourself if that's happening. 
But if you run your numbers, you will have a backbone. And I look at all that time I spent sitting down to run my numbers of what I needed to charge for all my products. I look at that as corporate telling me what the prices are. So those are the prices. That's it. That's what corporate said is the prices. Nope, no coupons, nothing. And then when I'm in the sales session and if I really decide to give them something for whatever reason or if I wanna throw something in or if I wanna make a better price, that's on me and I'm very conscious that it's coming out of my money, that I am the one giving them that money. Okay, third thing is your super fun side hustle hobby that you just love doing because you love doing it because it's super fun and everyone tells you you're good at it, guess what? It's no longer for fun on the side, it's now your full-time job. And just like any full-time job, it kills it. So for example, I'm a wedding photographer, right? I'm a photographer. I would say probably 20 to 30 days out of the year, I'm working, photographing. The rest of the year is marketing, bookkeeping, advertising, networking, uh, fulfilling client orders, emailing the crap out of stuff with the clients, trying to sell stuff with them, helping them answer their questions, rebuilding my website, blogging, copywriting my photos, figuring out what I wanna offer next year, education. There's so much more that goes into it. 90% of my life is in front of my computer in my home office. It's kind of why I started this channel because I miss talking to people. <laughs> And when I get out, I'm so chatty because I've been sitting at home alone for so long. So your side hustle turns from a fun hobby into, into work pretty quickly. Um, and I wish I could take more pictures. I wish that I could play more. I, I miss, uh, probably the number one thing I miss is having awesome photos of my own life. But now I just don't want to edit those photos. And I sure as hell don't have time to like put a book together or do anything with the photos. So that's kind of a bummer. Uh, number four is you need an exit strategy. Okay, this is actually a really big one and I'm gonna do a video just on this. So make sure you subscribe for that and I'll post it here when I, when I have done it. The thing about like blogging careers and becoming a YouTube star, the hard part about it is things change, right? So when I started my business, Google wasn't even around. Video blogging was barely, nobody was doing it. The people who are killing it now, like that are teaching people how to do it, are the ones that started it super early. You have to continually change and think about where you wanna be in your career as you go. When I started with weddings, for example, being a wedding photographer or being a photographer was actually a career for like your life. You'd retire as a photographer. Um, but now that's not the case. Now there's a 10 year life cycle for wedding photographers and either you need to switch to f portraits completely, which, or commercial or something like that, which pe some people do, but even those people get out of it. Uh, yeah, you might end up wanting like a real job. And I know, <laughs> oh, I know how shocking that sounds <laughs> to those of you watching this that have a real job and you hate it and you go to work every day before you get out of the car and you're like, oh, one more day of this shit like I get it but I tell you what I've lived my dream job my dream career being a photographer is all I've ever wanted to do and now that I've been doing it for 15 years it's not that I don't actually love the work I do I love weddings so much like I love weddings if I could just shoot weddings and not do the rest of it that'd be great but that's not how it works so I'm looking at my exit strategy and so I you need to look at your exit strategy like if you baking cakes on the side because it's fun, think about it when you're 50 and 60, like what are you gonna do? You wanna set up that business, like a bakery or something, set that business up to be sold so you can retire. Like, so really set it up like a franchise almost. So there's a lot of things you have to think about. You know, like for example, for a couple of years, cupcakes at weddings was a huge thing. And there was all these people who started cupcake businesses. Well, where are they now? Because they didn't pivot as soon as cupcakes were not trendy anymore. Now it's donuts. Now everybody's doing donut walls. Well, guess what? You're gonna get a good five years out of that and the next thing will be invented. So if you're not the kind of person that can either invent the next thing or 
like I live in this kind of a mid-sized town that's all like 10 years behind the times with everybody else. You can watch what's happening like in LA and New York and be the one to bring that trend to your area. I mean, for me, like I've been sh photographing barn weddings for 10 years, 15 years, and people are still throwing up barns, but like they're th building barns and starting this whole business. But how many years of barns are we going to get out of weddings? Like how many more years of that? I mean, we might have a couple more in my town, but geez, all these other real towns are already over barn weddings. So think about that. That's if you're not one of those people that can think critically and harshly like that, you're not going to survive with your small business. Everybody now is trying to quit their job to become a travel blogger, but there's literally 7 trillion travel blogs out there now, and they're all just writing all this content for free and wondering where the money is and how do they get money rolling. Well, yeah, everybody would want to just travel and talk about their day-to-day -day life and like a diary and make money off of it, but that's not a realistic business plan. Maybe if you were the first person to ever do a travel blog about Cuba, all right, all right, there's something, that's a niche, right? No one else is doing, you know? I mean, think about a couple years ago when like all of a sudden you hear all about Iceland. Well, you have to be like the first handful of people that goes to Iceland and then is monetizing it. And that's the other thing, you have to monetize that, right? So you gotta think about it from a business standpoint and be critical if you want long-term success. Let's use that cupcake uh, bakery as an example again, all right? When you're in your heyday of crushing it, you gotta f f siphon off like a ton of money and put it in savings. Because being taking your side hustle and becoming a solopreneur, someone who's self-employed, these freelance lifestyle that you keep hearing about, uh, you have to save for your retirement. There's no one doing that for you. There's no company match. There's no one even paying for my health care. So you need to like max out your HSA and get an HSA, health savings account, so that you have money when you need it. You don't get sick days. You don't get disability unless you buy it. So, and then the other thing is if, if like I have a rough year, I don't even get laid off. I can't even get unemployment. 15, 20% of my income goes straight to the government. So you got to plan for that. So when you're crushing it and you're having an awesome year, you put savings everywhere. Just everywhere. Anywhere and everywhere you can put savings. Pay off things, but make sure you also have a nice chunk in savings, especially retirement. Either you buy a building or something that's an asset, something. Don't just, you know, buy big diamond rings and, you know, Lamborghinis. Not that anybody is going to do that, but that's my tip there. Sticking with it. The other, uh, another last tip for you, or the, not really a tip, but more like a concept to think about since I'm being pretty harsh about not starting a side hustle. Uh, I will give you one caveat to that. If you come from a family of entrepreneurs, like if your parents owned a small business, you might be okay. If you come from a background of sales, like crushing it sales, like whatever. Uh, my last job, I w it was uh, retail, so sales was a big part of my job. The more, the more sales I had and the better profit I had, the more payroll hours I got. So I got really good at selling really profitable things. And that's really helped me in my business. They also made me figure out my finances and like cost of goods sold. Like I learned all that with my old job. So if you have something like that, that's a business related that you can translate to your small business, you, you might be okay uh, because you're looking at it from a business standpoint. And the third thing that I'd say would be a value is marketing based because it doesn't matter how good you are at what you do. It matters that everyone else thinks that you're the best. It matters that you're in front of everybody, that you know, marketing and sales, like uh, the hardest thing is like actually getting in front of everyone and opening up that big funnel of jobs. And then sales is capturing those people that come to you. So it really helps if you have a background in or a spouse that does one of those two things. So you want to throw out the widest net you can and then keep as much in that net as possible. So marketing, 
advertising, um, that kind of stuff really does translate. Uh, but sales, you got to be able to, you got to be able to close a sale. You can't be like, oh, gee, shucks. Oh, thanks. Do you really, you really want to hire me? Like, oh my God, thank you. That's not sales. <laughs> That's not it. <laughs> it's not it at all. Uh, for me, it's just easy. Like, so here's a, here's a good example. I'll give you a story from my own life. Uh, of how sales has uh, changed for me um, and that the more I do it, the better it is. So I actually am just thinking about it because I've got this picture behind me. These are, this is a picture of a wedding bouquet that I took for a wedding. It's the top half of the bouquet and then like this nice bokeh background. Uh, and so what I've started doing is like my clients are really down to earth and laid back. So they're not the kind of people that are gonna want like their wedding photos in their house, like, hi, I just got married. Like, that's not my client at all. But I still wanna sell them wall art, and I still think they need some wall art. So what I've started doing is taking these artsy photos of their flowers, which are gonna die in like two, three days, and might end up on a bookshelf dusty. And so what I've done is I've started taking these photos and printing them on metal. This one's on canvas. But I started printing them on metal and making them as like giant pieces of art for their house. Uh, it's great for a spare bedroom, great for your actual master bedroom. Um, the metal ones are great for a bathroom. So it's a great way for them to keep their wedding flowers in their house as a piece of artwork. And then when their friends and family walk in, they don't think, oh, that's a wedding photo, how cheesy. They think, wow, that's really, really cool. Those are really, really pretty. I, it's just a matter of like thinking through something. Like anytime there's any sort of pushback or struggle, just, you know, get creative with it and take your ego out and think, oh, well, how could I solve that? Like, what would I want? For me, I wouldn't want like my wedding photos in my face either on my wall. But something like this is totally cool. I've actually made one that was a giant metal print and we used it as the bride and groom's headboard. So much fun. And that's fun for me. That's sales, man. So easy. Like something really, really cool no one else has. And so you just pick one or two things that you think are really cool and it does come with time. So that's why I'm saying if you have sales as your, uh, if you have a sales background in whatever, you just translate that to your new career, you know? Um, and a lot of that just comes with time. You can read books on it and stuff, but it's really practice is a lot of it. Uh, if you really want your side hustle to be your career and you quit your job, those are the things that I think you need to think about. Uh, and let me know how it's worked out for you. I'd love to hear from somebody like me who's been self-employed for 15 years. You know, ebbs and flows and the struggles and the highs and how you deal with it. Love it. Love to hear all that stuff because sometimes some days are better than others, honestly. Oh, I never really take pictures in my own life anymore and I still haven't created my book from my big uh, sabbatical, my big vacation to Africa. So, so feel free to leave in the comments a heckle uh, heckle me on that until I get it done because I need that push. I need someone to help me get it done. I'm so busy creating albums and stuff for my clients that I'm not taking care of myself in my own, my own personal life. So anyway, those are my tips on, you know, if you really want to make your side hustle your career, but it's a wild ride. I have to be honest. I love working from home. I love being self-employed. I love that I can, uh, if one thing's not working, I can just ditch it and move on to something else. I love that I can shake it all up and make it more interesting, like doing videos. Like I've always hated videos, but it turns out I love doing these videos. I never wanted to shoot weddings and I love weddings. So it's really sort of interesting, like how life works. You know, there's some struggles with uh, running your own business and being self-employed. You know, I hope this helps you be realistic about the journey. I hope it shows you what you need to work on before you, before you quit your job. All right, that's it. Subscribe for more, please. And uh, let me know if you have any questions or even if you totally disagree with everything I've said, love to hear it anyway. Uh, I just am a big fan of real talk, real honesty, and I'm not going to blow smoke up your ass about like, I'm going to make six figures tomorrow just by starting a blog. So hopefully you're somebody like me where you appreciate the reality check uh, because I look at it as just helpful. It's just really, really helpful. Um, what matters is that you don't believe everything you hear and that you have a game plan for your own success and you own your own success. That makes it more rewarding anyway. So until next time, thanks for watching. See ya.